Before I break down how I've been staying healthy in the last three months, I need to issue a disclaimer that these activities I'm about to mention are things that I have researched and committed to on my own and may not exactly work the same way for anyone watching this video with the hopes of following some of these tips that I will be mentioning. So kindly consult a professional where you have doubts. It's really important that you do not copy this without proper planning and research. Now at the peak of the quarantine season, I gained a lot of weight and weighed about 92 kg. And depending on the metric system you're using, that's about 203 pounds. I was very uncomfortable and it was also constantly being drummed in my ears that I needed to do something about it. So as my stubborn self usually does at my own convenient time, I decided to commit to losing weight and getting healthier for real this time. Now, I've been announcing these transformations and quitting two weeks in and starting over again and quitting and starting. And, you know, I decided to follow my own advice and do this quietly and not announce things, but just do it. So today in this video, I'm going to share three things or three activities that I've used to lose weight and subsequently attempt to tone um, these muscles to the way I want it. The first one is intermittent fasting. I'm sure you've heard it before. So on 24th June, I decided to stop eating heavy in the evenings and replace my suppers with healthy snacks or smoothies instead and not also eat after 6 p.m. My smoothie of choice was going to be mashke. Now, for those who don't know, it's a blended cornmeal in Ghana called um, kinke. I prefer to use the fancy version of this kinke for this smoothie. And that was what I was going to be having for my supper for the most part of this intermittent fasting journey. Now, I couldn't be very consistent with the mashke, but one thing I was consistent with was the time of day my last meal was, and that was 5 p.m. My next meal, which was breakfast, would also be had around uh, 10 a.m. Now, there are a lot of guides on doing intermittent fasting and a lot of information online to help you craft what works for you. But the funny thing is, I started doing this weeks into it before I came across the concept of what, what I was doing was called which, I mean, I knew it had a technical name, but I didn't even know or realize that I'd been doing intermittent fasting. So I ended up with a 16 by 8 range of intermittent fasting, meaning that I fasted for 16 hours and had my meals within a space of 8 hours. And that changed as I got more comfortable and could sometimes even do a 20 by 4 period, which, you know, I'd, I'd been very strict with in terms of this. So for 30 days, I did every day except for Fridays, which were my cheat days. Now, remember that the first few days of trying this out will have you almost losing your mind. But I found that either drinking tea, and I don't mean tea in the Ghanaian way. No, not that thick milo that can pass for chocolate lava. No, not that kind of tea. I mean tea, bag of tea, hot water, or just drinking water is good for you. Now, do not eat. It will ruin your fast. You don't need to eat and come back again. Now, diet. Let's talk about food. Diets. Like I said in my disclaimer, I'm not giving expert advice here. Whatever I'm sharing here is things I have done and I'm still doing that seem to be working for me at the moment. And experts often say that a change in diet contributes more to transforming our bodies than even the exercises that we put ourselves through. So the diet is very important. But for me, my diet hasn't changed really. I still eat right about the same things I used to eat before I started this journey. And that is usually either eating oats in the morning or depending on how I feel, I might eat wache or some leftover from the previous day. Sometimes I also forget to eat and end up eating my first meal around midday or even 1 p.m. I haven't been following a very strict regimen with my food. And by association, I eat a lot of vegetables now because my wife cannot live without them and you shouldn't also live without them. Eat your greens. They're very important. But yeah, generally my portions have reduced just a little and I make sure that I follow the rule number one, which is not eating late and not eating too early in the morning. Again, an expert can better advise you on what to do with this. There are a lot of foods that can boost your metabolism and give you added advantages. So please do your research and consult an expert about everything that could work for you. Yes. Now let's go to three exercise. So the first two things that I mentioned alone can get you very far. You can also lose weight and feel lighter and much more comfortable. But we all know that being slimmer doesn't necessarily mean that you're healthier. So I decided to um, exercise every other day in addition to my intermittent fasting and managing the portions of food that I eat where I see fit. Now I broke the exercises into two parts, which is cardio and strength. On the days where I did cardio, 
I wouldn't do strength exercises. And in between that, I would do full body exercises while intermittent fasting remained a constant. So cardio, I would usually, you know, go on walks with mild jogs every other day. And I had to do this religiously because for some reason I have a high case of histamine release where in my body's quest to heal itself when I work out, the release of histamine causes an itching sensation, which is commonly referred to as the runner's itch. If you've ever had it before, this is very uncomfortable. But lately I'm replacing the walks and mild jogs with cycling and skipping, which tends to be much more user-friendly for my body and doesn't cause me that much discomfort. The key here is to be consistent and some of these discomforts will go away over time. This also helps to speed up the weight loss in general as it tends to burn more calories than usual. Strength. After about 30 days of doing intermittent fasting, I had lost about 6 kg and I loved the size of my body that I was currently having. It was ideal for me to start building and sculpting muscles from that. So I'm currently doing a lot of body weights and strength exercises like squats and lunges and push-ups, ab workouts and the likes to try and tone my body the way I want it to be. After losing the fat around the areas that were hard to burn with just exercising, as you would probably hear people saying that uh, they're working on losing fat around their bellies or just particular parts of their body, no, it doesn't work that way. You have to lose total body weight before you can build it to however you want it to be. And this also means that after losing your total body weight, you may have to reduce the intermittent fasting if you've reached your weight goal and want to actually now build muscle from there to how you want to currently look. So I'm just beginning this and there's a lot more to do. So this is where I've been. This is my journey and tips or the things I've learned in the past three months. And I'm quite happy with the results so far. I'm looking forward to doing more of this with my body weight and getting ribbed hopefully <laughs> i'll be sharing some of these uh, videos with you in the coming weeks and months i don't know but yeah if you like this video give it a thumbs up it will mean a lot and youtube also suggested to other users who could benefit from this information my name is kwame do subscribe if you haven't already done that and i will catch you another time peace